We're going to continue with our operations on matrices. And just to step back a second, we saw how to add scalar multiplication. We saw to determine if matrices are equal or to actually set two matrices equal to each other. We did some subtraction. And remember, in order to perform these operations, they had to be, <laughs> as far as addition, subtraction, and equality, they had to be the same size. Keep that in mind because matrix multiplication is different. So that's what we're going to look at here. So matrix multiplication is not an entry by entry multiplication. It's defined as a row by column operation, which means we're gonna, if we're gonna multiply two matrices, we would multiply all the elements in the first row of matrix one by all the elements in the first column of matrix two or matrix B. Then we add those results. It's very awkward. So let's practice. So it's a row by column operation, which means I'm going to take this row of matrix A and multiply it by this column of matrix B, entry for entry, and then add the results. Well, take a look at this. In or, since I'm doing an entry by entry in a row in a column, the dimensions have to work out. So look at the dimensions on this first matrix. Two rows, three columns, okay? Let's look at the dimension on the second matrix. I've got three rows and two columns. And if you look at the dimension of the result, it is a two by two matrix. So yeah, that's a little squirrely. They're not the same size. And the result is a different size from the original matrices. So let's see what happens. I'm going to multiply row one by column one and then add those results. And I'm going to put that in this position which is the first row, first column position. So row one times column one, and I put it in the one, one position. So I'm gonna multiply two times negative one, which is negative two, six times one, which is six, zero times zero, which is zero. So look at what I did. Two times negative one, six times one, zero times zero. So entry for entry, now I'm gonna add those results and it gives me a four. And I put that four, four in the first row, first column position. Now let's multiply the first row by the second column. And those results are gonna be put in the first row, second column, right in here. All right, so let's do our multiplication. A two times a two would give me a four. A six times a four is a 24. And a zero times a negative three is zero. So entry for entry, two times two, six times four, zero times negative three. I'm gonna add those results and I get a 28 and I put it in the first row, second column position. We're not done because now we need to multiply the second row by each of these columns. Okay, so let's do it. Zero times negative one is zero. Negative four times one is negative four. And five times zero, whoops. Come on, get away. Uh, five times zero is zero. Zero times negative one, negative four times one, five times zero. Add those up, we get a negative four. Finally, row two times column two is gonna go into the two, two position. Second row, second column. 
So it'll be 0 times 2, which will be 0. Negative 4 times 4, negative 16. And 5 times negative 3, which is negative 15. When I add those up, I get a negative 31. And I'm done. So looking at my result, it's a two by two matrix. But the original was a two by three and a three by two. So let's look at how these dimensions must work in order for us to uh, multiply. So let's look at the sizes of the matrices. Here is what has to happen. The number of columns in the first matrix must match the number of rows in the second matrix. That's the only time you can add, excuse me, multiply. So these two numbers on your dimensions, this number on the inside and this number on the outside. Those two numbers must match. And when they match, you can multiply, and the result is going to be the size of the two dimensions that are on the outside. So let's suppose we wanted to multiply a 4x4 four four matrix with a 4x3. The question is, is it possible? It will only be possible if these two inside numbers match. And they do. So yes, it's possible. How big will be the how big will the resulting matrix be? It's going to be the size of the outside dimensions. So the resulting matrix will be a 4 by 3 matrix. So can I multiply a 2 by 2 by a 2 by 1? Well, the inside guys match, so yes, I can. How big will the result be? The result will be a 2 by 1 matrix. Finish this up, pause the video, and then come back and check your work. So check your understanding with the rest of these. Problem 3 cannot be multiplied because the inside dimensions do not match. Problem four can and problem five can. And you can see the size of the resulting matrices. Let's look at some properties of matrix multiplication. Let's suppose I have three matrices, A, B, and C. And then I might have a little scalar little c. Then the associative property of matrix multiplica multiplication will work, which means if I'm multiplying a times b times c, I could group b and c together, or I could group a and b together, and when I multiply those, I would get the same result. Let's look at the distributive property. If I had a times parentheses b plus c, then that would be the same thing as distributing a to b, a times b, plus a times c. We could also do it if it was a right distributive property. If I had a plus b in parentheses times c, then if I did, if I distributed this direction, I would have a times c plus b times c, and they would be equal. And finally, if you're multiplying a scalar times AB, that's the same as multiplying the scalar times A and that result times B, or the scalar times B and that result times A. Here is a thing we need to realize. If I have two matrices, A times B, it is not necessarily going to be B times A. Now, I know in regular arithmetic type values that works, but not for matrices because of the conditions we have to have on our sizes, on our dimensions.
So that's not necessarily true. Okay, so let's do some multiplication. And actually, we're going to save ourselves some time, and we're going to do these on the calculator. So pull your calculator up. And I want to find A times G, and I've got A, and I've got G, so I'm going to put those in my calculator. So I'm going to go to my matrix operation. I'm going to scooch over to edit, and I'll press enter. And I'm going to call this a 2 by 2 matrix, matrix A. And I'm going to type in 2, 6, 0, negative 4. Check my numbers, and I'll press second and quit. Now I'm going to go back to matrix. I'm going to go over to edit. And now I want to put in matrix G. So I'm just going to come on down here and put something in the G matrix position. And G is a 2 by 2 matrix. And I'm going to type in. 3, 4, 0, negative 7. 3, enter, 4, enter, 0, enter, negative 7, enter. Always press enter. And always check it. Make sure you don't have a typo. All right, then I'm going to quit. <clears throat> now, let's find A times G. Those are already in my calculator. So all I need to do is go to the names, and I'm going to call up matrix A. So all I did was stay under the names and entered on A. Then I'm going to multiply that by matrix G. So I need to pull up matrix G. So I'll go to matrix, stay under the names, and just call up matrix G. Notice what I have on my display, A times G. I'm just going to press Enter, and look how fast that was. I love it. I love using the calculator for this. So 6, negative 34, 0, 28. There is A times G. Did we do that one earlier by hand? No, we didn't. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so there we go. There's A times G. Let's set up F times B. So let's put B in our calculator. Let's put F in our calculator, and let's do that multiplication. So pause it, put it in your calculator, find your answer, and then come back and check it. Okay, so using our calculator, we found A times G. If you type in the F and the B function into your calculator, F times B should give you this result. You already have A and B in your calculator, so if you try to do A times B, you're going to get an error, a dimension mismatch. That's because the dimensions don't follow the dimensions we need for multiplication, so you get an error on that, and you just can't perform that operation. And then to do F squared, F should already be in your calculator. So pull up the name of F times the name of F again, and you will get this is your result. Or you could just do F squared. You get the same result for squaring that matrix. And then here at the bottom, we're asked to find F squared on our calculator. Well, we did that already, so we can just say C above. A times G, we already did that one on our calculator, so we can see above. And then finally, 3B plus 2F, well, we already had B in our calculator. We already had F, so using the matrix names feature, Type in 3 times matrix B plus 2 times matrix F, and you get your result. I will stop this video here and then do one more video to finish up this.